Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of this uh, panel discussion. Uh, in this episode, we will talk about balancing the stakeholders' interests around sustainability. Is not just about the environment because it is uh, closely linked to what we call as the triple bottom line concept, right? I mean, it's about the economic value addition. It's about social value addition. It's about environmental value addition. Um, and then there are a whole lot of stakeholders involved in this. You have, uh, you know, the, the, the employees, you have the investors. Currently, ESG is becoming very important from the investor's side. Uh, the the uh, regulators, uh, there are a new dimension of regulations are coming around the sustainability and of course the consumer. So I think it's, it's uh, a, a multi-stakeholder concept as well. And uh, in that direction, uh, you know, I want to kind of ask this question to you because you come from, what I can say, cool industry. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, warming is something which uh, the industry likes. Uh, but of course, not the level of the global warming, what we are talking about, but uh, yes. Uh, but in, in, in this multi-stakeholder um, matrix of sustainability, uh, how do you think, uh, what are the important features? It's, it's uh, yes, environment is critical, but then there are other stakeholders as well. So how do you kind of balance all those things? Absolutely. Santosh, first of all, it's such an honor to be among this powerhouse uh, and the leaders of the industry and learning so much just listening to everyone uh, around this topic. But this topic is near and dear to everyone's heart. Right, and we have so much to do, and we are. I think that that we time is running out, right? From the perspective of the amount of work that is needed to be done by 2030, by 2040, by 2050, um, you know. So I think it's not just about having one set of shareholders stepping in, right? It's all about making sure every human, as an employee, as a consumer, as a customer, as an investor as a shareholder, as a stakeholder is stepping in. And it's so awesome to hear some of the, you know, what Sudarshan talked about, what Tanme talked about, what uh, Venki talked about from the transparency, from the supply chain, from logistic, everything plays a role, right? Some of the facts as I was uh, reading through it and preparing my head around this, it's mind boggling to see that uh, each year an estimated of one third of our soup that is produced, equivalent to 1.3 billion tons, ends up in rotting in the bins of consumers and retailers. So we have a responsibility to ensure that we are managing through the gaps of a poor trans transportation or managing through the gaps of harvesting practices that's contributing to it, right? And we are all in the midst of this. As I'm listening through this, it's very clear that energy efficiency is another big challenge. Electronic waste that's growing uh, by 38% year over year, right? That's mind boggling to me. And our recycling is reducing by 20%. So it's going in the opposite direction and we have so much to do and bring the shareholders and stakeholders and everyone together. And of course, in my industry, water, energy, food, uh, you know, we love, we love hot temperatures, that's what we are, but that comes with the cost of energy efficiencies that we need to buy, like the ecosystem that we really need to touch. Uh, you know, humankind is polluting water in rivers and lakes, patch care that nature can really recycle and purify. And that's, uh, that's one of the raw material for us, to seize water, to bag it, to produce it, to bag it, to get it in the hands of the consumer, and it's very mind-boggling that how do we intervene. So what I believe in that it's just not a matter of this one individual on one set of stakeholders who have to take ownership of this, right? It has to cut through the ecosystem strongly. But it truly starts with the awareness as the number one topic, right? If people are aware and people are aware of their consumption, they're aware of their, their buying habits, they're aware of what they're paying attention to, that's where it starts. But then I think, um, and the technology leader, I remember 10 years ago, we were talking about cyber and raising the awareness of cyber security. 
this is the exact same mind-boggling topic, right? Starting with the awareness and then really cutting through the waste at every angle. And if I were to play a role from the technology leader, you know, I, I first thing first, I say no to a technology debt, no to a data debt, right? And raising awareness becomes a topic for my, for my mindset, right? And businesses today have to really consider sustainability, starting from the footprint, engaging the employees, making a meaningful impact in the workforce, in the workplace culture, right? We have to train, we have to reward. There's so much to be done. We have to amp up our workplace. Um, but from as a technology leader, I believe that if I say no to technology debt, I say no to data debt, that's when I can start to introduce a major impact. Of course, I touch supply chain. Of course, I touch logistics. Of course, I touch every part of our business. And, you know, some, some of the leaders here are... Uh, is we, we are a supplier to Polk. We are a supplier uh, to Walmart, right? And uh, and it's important that we are solving the practice of our retailers that we supply our product to. And that's how we are really focused on in this environment. A lot to do. Um, our sustainability goals, good, bad, or ugly, are defined by the retailers. And that's what we are really focused on. And we are enforcing the same to our vendors as well at the same point. So hopefully that really sums up where our focus is at the moment. Thank you, Nilo. And I think that you did mention about the, the, the everybody kind of contributing that I can tell you with all more than 200,000 employees now at HCL, we, we are seeing that uh, we drive the initiative called the power of one. And um, and it's currently what we have is, uh, you know, uh, work from home uh, emissions. Uh, what usually used to be the controlled environment, now the work from home emissions which are coming in. Uh, how do you kind of look at that? How do you kind of, uh, you know, account for that as well as uh, mitigate that? So these are some of the growing concerns where we need much more involvement from our employees and other stakeholders as well. Trinity, leading that question to you, I mean, uh, Google, the platform in which almost all stakeholders do discuss, do bring it out there. And, and I would also see that the, the convergence of tech and sustainability playing a big role going into the future as well, isn't it? And uh, how do you see that? Yeah, thank you so much for um, for uh, the opportunity to join this great panel today and talk about this. this is my favorite topic. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, there are two things kind of happening simultaneously, which um, which is really exciting. It's like no other time in in our history. One is that um, you know, sort of the whole world has a unity or a vision uh, now. Everybody's sort of looking in the same direction at the same time. We tend to think about things in silos, our business, our industry, um, our personal life, our work life. But now, right now, uh, uh, in, in particular since the global pandemic, the whole world sort of looked in one direction at the same time and said, what are we doing, right? The financial markets, uh, the governments, the private sector, the public sector, individuals started looking at the same time saying, "What? wait a minute, we are all connected. And, uh, and started kind of waking up. And so, uh, you know, what we're seeing now is uh, more than 90% of all CEOs consider this a top priority. They also consider it very personal. They've experienced climate change in some way. And so right now, everyone is not only concerned about sustainability from a business perspective, they're concerned about sustainability because it impacts their home, their family, their friends, their neighbors. Um, and so, at the same time, we have uh, everybody kind of focused on the same thing. Now, the second thing that we have is we have the foundation that we need. Let's think back to, um, uh, to before the internet and how we all worked together. Uh, we uh, we went to meetings in a different way. Uh, we had had physical maps to get us around. Uh, we had to mail things and leave behind pamphlets and all these different ways of how we interact. And then the internet was born and everything changed. We, we, uh, we had e-commerce, we had smartphones and apps, right? The way we interacted and talked and communicated 
from a business perspective and from a personal perspective started shifting. It start, we started breaking down some of those silos. And we had this foundational piece built by technology to help us interact and connect in real time. These are the two critical pieces that we need to make this overwhelming sort of challenge actually possible. We have to start changing and breaking down those silos even more. We have to start uh, understanding and connecting information in real time faster. Uh, and we have to be open to the fact that new routes to market are happening. Uh, new technology is gonna be established. New uh, suppliers, new, um, new customers, uh, everything is going to be disrupted, but that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for business. It's, a it's an opportunity for all of us as both individuals uh, to be empowered and, and to think about what we want to do and what we bring to the table. And it's an opportunity for our, 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 in our work environments for us to reimagine what our possibilities are. And that's really exciting. It can definitely be overwhelming because we do have to understand full life cycles and we have not set up uh, our working and personal lives to do that. We've created nice, neat little packages and compartments for everything. But the good news is we have the foundation to change that and we have uh, and we have kind of everyone focused on it at the same time. So we can do it. And uh, and we just have to really kind of use our, our creativity and uh, and be open to this new sort of radical collaboration to take place um, and, and start sharing and start opening up. And I think you're starting to see evidence of this. You're starting to see organizations that may have traditionally been in a specific industry diversifying and branching out. They might have new uh, new customers. Um, they might start be considering themselves materials company versus uh, whatever industry they may be in. Uh, they may be considering new routes to market, or you might see uh, specific industries becoming more tech, climate tech companies, right? We're going to see a continuing of this sort of shift, but this is exciting. This is what we need to see happening. And this is the opportunity that technology plays, not as sort of the great solver, but the great connector, the thing that helps us break down those silos more. And so I think it's a really exciting time. I'm really hopeful and optimistic. Some days it's a little harder than others. I'd like us to go a little faster, but I am very encouraged that the two big pieces that we really need are they're there, right? And now it's just a matter of uh, of really kind of enabling everyone to use their uh, their creativity and their expertise in their fields and industries to reimagine what's possible. No, I get to the end. In some sense, isn't that kind of a resetting? Um, there need to be those right. new models which has to come out and uh, it's it's almost that everybody is back to that starting point and you know, uh, you know and, and uh, you you mentioned in terms of uh, the the collaboration playing a very key role uh, because the future many of the things uh, it's it's not certain although all of us we have committed uh, and have those commitments of net zero but if you ask, have you kind of charted it out to the minute details? No, we haven't because it's it's so dependent on future techs and how things are going to develop. And that's where the uh, innovation and uh, the, the way it kind of evolves is going to be interesting from here, right? Uh, so thank you, Neil. Thank you, Trinity, for that.